and the trip begins on the way to the airport. I'm down to the train to take me to my gate, Hartsfield Jackson. The next stop is for C gates. C as in Charlie. To help prevent the spread of illness, wash your hands with soap. Down in my dad's basement. Getting the rest of our supplies. Alright, we're here at Canoe Country Outfitters. Picked up our permit. That's a cool old birch bark. I didn't even know, huh? I think it was kind of a spur of the moment. Though. Yeah, I, I didn't even so know somebody else told me, and I was like, really? And then I was up at Zucks. And, and then back. Yeah. And out. Hey, Ben. Good. Mm, this is going to be fun. bugs. Currently the black flies are out already. So are the sand flies. No no, no skims and very little mosquitoes so we'll deal with that. That looks nice and level and we're sleeping in the car tonight and putting in at 5 30 in the morning. Alright so we're here at the entry point. This is Pickett Lake. Have a nice sunset in this parking lot. Here's the stream going down to Mudra Lake, where we put in. I'll show you on the big map here. This is just a short 30 rod portage. Pretty muddy, but it's fine. So obviously we're here, put in here, paddle, have a, a 70 rod portage, 160, and tin can lake, and up through horse lake, I was told there is a beaver dam here we have to go over, and then horse river, give me a couple portages on that, then we'll be in Basswood Lake at Basswood Falls, heading up into Crooked. It's about five in the morning and 
We're hitting our first portage on Mudrow. This one's a short one, just 30 rods. If you're not familiar, a rod is about 15 and a half feet. I'm not sure why they use that measurement here, but that's what they do. Then we're gonna paddle across Mudrow Lake and have a 160 rod portage, which is a half mile. Sun, sunrise on Mudra Lake, trying to watch for rocks. I'm not seeing any rocks in the center here. I think we're good. It dropped real deep right here. by Mudro Lake. Let's look for rocks. All right, head back to the food pack. See how steep this was that I was coming down. And there's the end of the 160 rod. And this is actually tin can like the last one was sand pit. biggest one so far. But we're making good time. It's still about seven in the morning. We're an eighth of the way through our day. Travel wise, we're doing about 16 miles. Oh, it's horse, horse lake. Not bad. This is our second longest portage. All the th our three longest portages of the trip are all behind us. We got one seventy rod left, and a bunch of little ones, and some beaver dams. Woohoo! This one's a nice put in. Oh, wonder what those were. Frogs, I think. Bunch of stuff just jumped into the water there. Like here on Horse Lake, almost halfway across. I just wanted to catch this. Look at how calm this water is. Perfectly still. Isn't a ripple in it unless there's a bug or a fish. We're finding a portage around some rapids. We're thinking about winding it. But it's not worth it with a fiberglass canoe. There's only so many rocks those things can hit. So we're just going to put in right here. So there's a portage that goes around this. I'm trying to see if we can just run it. I'm thinking it's looking runnable if we get out and just walk it through that part. Then we can run. I think we're good. Going back for the food bag. This is the last portage on Horse River. 
a little more portage out of Horse River into Basswood River. I don't know if this is picking up. I put a bug net on, but sand flies are out in full force. Found the 75 rod portage. It was marked on the wrong side of the river on the map. So I <laughs> scrambled all over those rocks over there trying to find a path until we spotted this. But that's why we're part of game. Right there. Too shallow. Cannot run it. We've ran. There was five rapids through here, and we ran three of them. So, there's three less portages. Still got bug net on, uh, sand flies are, they get you every time you stop. But, I was wrong again. Um, there are several portages on Horse River that are not marked, so I was one off. This is the 75 rod one, the last one was a 50. And this is our last one before we get into Basswood River. Then we have a uh, portage on the Canadian side, which is allowed because it's the only portage around the falls. And that'll be our last portage of the day. Then it's going to be up crooked. Quite a ways, hopefully, to find a campsite. Goodbye, Horse River. Basswood River. That rumbled over there is Lower Basswood Falls. There's the portage. So you got the falls. There's the top of the falls. The upper, or one side of the falls. And here's the portage. Can't wait to show you guys. That's the American side of Lower Basswood Falls. You can barely see the tail end of the Canadian side, but welcome to Canada. <sighs> Time to get some water. <sighs> so heading back up the Canadian portage here. And there's the canoe. I'll be down in just a minute. I want to go look at this waterfall. The water going? Huh? The water going? Yeah, there's, it's, it's down there. Go. Get a good look, look at this waterfall. It's beautiful. Yay, last portage of the day done. That was our ninth. Ninth portage of the day. We've gone, I think about, I want to say maybe 11 miles at this point. And it's still only about 10.30 in the morning. Wow. There she is. There's a branch there, 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 and there. Stunning.
last portage of the day done. On Crooked Lake, decided to take a stop and check out Table Rock. over but you can see the rocks underneath it same there and here also part of it. As you can see. So they used to meet here and trade. Um, early settlers and Native Americans from what I understand. Ojibwe's. Pretty cool. Perfect site, but that'll do. I think we found a place we're going to relocate. Yeah, some droppings. There's more, but there's a nice tent pad up there by the fire pit. There's another one over here for a little extra privacy. And this one's perfectly flat. That one's up there. Drop some packs to lay claim to this one. We're gonna do a little fishing and uh, and then go back and break down that camp and move over here. All right, here's the view for my new camp. Plenty of seating. Plenty of bugs. See if I can get some. Oh. Huh. Time to start setting up. All right, fish on. Ooh, wow, it's a big one. Oh, well, not a big, big one, but. Nice, it's a fighter. It's thick. 
good. Nope, I was just setting. There you go. Oh, that's fine. He was probably 18, 19 inches. He was thick. <laughs> All right, fish on. That's a big one. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's, that thing's huge. Fish on. You need a net? Huh? Oh. The net actually is better for releasing it. Yeah. Oh my. Yeah, yeah it looks like a good one. There it is. Ganser. Yeah, they got a crown on their head when they stick it up. You can hear it quacking away. Trying to look at fishing in the rain. No goats. Well, we were about to head out and do some fishing, but got a little wet on us. Down for it pretty hard. Find it still. been a good day had good fishing the wind was just wicked it was crazy here let me show you the fish we got we just kept one for dinner we throw the rest back right here. I don't know if you can see it very well. Nice walleye. Well, I'm going to leave him in the water. It's an upsetting him.
morning. It's five something in the morning, day three. Let's do it. Pro tip. Um, bring one of these little seating pads with you. That way you don't have to fumble around putting your shoes on in the tent. Do it out here. Keep your feet dry. Give you guys a little walk back here. So, camp. And moose poop. This is the way it's back. And uh, your own semi private commode. Mosquitoes came out in full force. So, sand flies finally have some competition. I know most, most people don't do their stoves this way, but I find it works good. mosquitoes out so they're out right now and sand flies will probably be out within about an hour luckily the mosquitoes don't usually follow you out to the lake on the lake the sand flies will anyway woohoo bugs We decided to get out of the canoe and stretch our legs and explore this island a little bit. And pretty cool. Nice walking on this soft ground, all this moss and lichen. It's like having air cushioned soles or something. It's not going to be season for a while, but nice big blueberry patch here. Still spring. So things are still trying to leaf. Some sort of juniper. A beautiful place. Not sure what these are. I'll ask somebody. Huh. Oh.
baby garters thing. lake is really weird. It's 27 miles wide. It's got a lot of bays, but the entire center of it's like a river, so it's got like this pretty strong current. Um, it's like a, just like a big river. So we're going to be going upstream on it all day tomorrow. Um, back to the waterfall, which is probably six or seven miles um, away. It's all up, up uh, against current. Old Native American trick. Dry grass to get the water out of your canoe. <laughs> hey, look, it works. <laughs> yeah, we're just going to get more water in here, but yeah. we start out with it. Yeah, Be beautiful. Biggest fish of the trip. That we know of. <laughs> Ooh, look at that thing. All right, let's get a pick. Check out the crazy current. This is a lake, not a river. Time to take the hammock down. Moving sights in the morning over to the waterfall. <sighs> what a beautiful spot for a hammock though. I can't think of a better one.
passing through Wednesday Bay around this point and up there is going to be Table Rock again heading out to another campsite it's coming out of Wednesday Bay about to turn the corner onto Table Rock We're here at Table Rock still. Thought I'd show you the camp. Have a little snack, some water. Coming in. Gorgeous little campsite. Great view. Little tent pad there. Now they're over there. Lots of room to kind of roam around. This is a cool rock formation. They almost look like they're put here deliber deliberately. They very well might have been. I mean, Table Rock was put there deliberately. So, this might have been some sort of other part of, I don't know, maybe all the negotiations went on over there. And everybody else that was coming along in the parties sat up here or something, I don't know. Speculation, but... It makes sense. Coming up on Picture Rock, um, we came back through here earlier, and there are some pictograms on here, which if you want to see, you should come on up and check out. We pulled up in here. And we got our campsite for the day. It's only 10.30 in the morning. We didn't, uh, it was supposed to take anywhere from three to four hours to get here, but we got it in two. So we, we were booking it. And we even had that stop at Table Rock. Let me show you the campsite we got. It's beautiful. My dad's up over that rock setting the tent up there's a nice tent pad over there well, not a tent pad but there's a flat spot so here's the fire pit a little gravity filtering and let me show you our view tonight thought about putting it there but it's all rock can't get a stake in so let me go help put this tent up
I'm checking out this other campsite here, right by the falls. It's got a nice tent pad. Great view. There used to be an old cabin here for the Forest Service that um, my dad's, my godfather, I guess, and uh, his brother used to work from when they were young. But I think it burnt down or somebody burnt it down or something. So he's looking for that and I'm going to go hit these rapids. See if I can get something else. We're having curry tonight. Oh, there's more canoes here. Hmm. Anyway, I'm going to find my way over here. And while well, he's looking for that old cabin. I'm going to go this way. Oh yeah. Let's see if we can get two of them. us like in and out it sucked us all the way up to the waterfall and now it's kind of spitting us out over where the chute is and I guess we're just gonna kind of go along the edge of this it's taking us for a ride though it's fun Taking a little break from the wind, picked up pretty hard. Didn't get any fish or any bites in the river up there. So, just doing food that we packed in. Threw a bobber out here with a leech on it in this little sheltered bay. Maybe I'll grab a northern swimming through. If not, oh well, we got plenty of food. <sighs> Beautiful day though. The wind's a bit brutal, but it's keeping the bugs out of camp, so.
crazy to cook rice. This is literally all I need. That's how efficient these things are. Get steaming away. Once you get it going, it really doesn't take much to keep it going. Matter of fact, you want to keep the flame down because the uh, everything else just heats up so much. It just kind of maintains a simmer, and you don't really add a whole lot of wood to it. It's a little bit here and there. Mixing that butter into it. Individual grains. Came out perfect. Oh, yeah. Um, this is the one to go in. First, first portage of the day. It's Wednesday. Let's see. Day five. And we don't have a huge ways to go. We're just going to Horse Lake. But we're going upstream. We got about five rapids. Most of them aren't runnable, but two or three of them we're going to have to get out of the canoe and probably line. So we'll be pretty wet. Eh. Oh well, it's raining today anyway, so we're getting wet either way. And there's a very good reason why there's a portage here. <laughs> I wouldn't call that runnable. Okay, so start of Horse River. Rock here. Alrighty. Some miscellaneous stuff and we're off and got a couple packs on got the food pack too Oof. my beard is a mess 
Um, another portage. Trying to watch my footing here at the same time. But. Ow. Ooh, that'll wake you up. Anyway. This is a pretty rocky one. A lot of roots. But. Not very long. Just 50 rods. Yeah, it's kind of neat. We're on this river here. The Horse River. It's kind of slowly starting to narrow and we have little kind of short paddles and short portages pretty much the whole way through so nice little breaks from the bowl rock here all righty oh, that's almost to the end Just on the top of this kind of beaver dam looking thing. I don't think it is an actual beaver dam, but it might be. I think it's just debris that got caught up on rocks. Here, that, is a, that beaver's not very good at building dams because the water is low. Alright, so I think our theory is correct. You'll see the rocks, it's kind of spanning over, it's a little waterfall. This is not a beaver dam, these are just sticks and debris that are collecting along this top of this little, uh, little kind of falls going down towards the chute. Nice having this lightweight canoe. Remember in the old days, those canoes were heavy. You know, for some reason, I'd strap all sorts of gear into them, more so than I have in here. You hit a long enough portage, by the time you get to the end of it, it feels like your head's gonna pop off. <laughs> Not this, this is easy breezy. And it looks like this is the end. Yeah, nice short one. Nice put out too. Not too many rocks. Great. Oh, we're gonna have uh, to watch for rocks going through there though. All right, rock, rock. I'll keep an eye out. I'll show you. I'm going to get on my knees. Yeah, right up the V. A rock, rock, rock.
straight up. Alright, I think I went that way. That way. Huh? Okay, we'll go this way. Okay, it got real shallow here. Let's get off this one. I still don't even see, oh, that's what we hit. Huh? Yeah. All right. Go. Yep. Yeah, throw me the rope. I'll get out. Let me hang us up here. Huh? All right. Yep. Oh, oh, oh. And so we're gonna line this one just up past there yeah I'm uh, I'm gonna open up my pants you know what the whole bottom of my pants are solid mud anyway I'm just gonna go through I want to just give it a push I gotta get past, I'll get up to that rock. I'm just gonna go through the water, I think. Huh? Um, let me... Ooh, that's nice and cold. Huh? I got it. Oh, that's where you're gonna get in? Yeah, I think if you get it on this side of that rock. Okay. If you, yeah, you, I can hold it here. You can get in. Where you're standing? Oh, okay. I can't, I can't take it over this rock. Maybe I can. Keep it. If you can get in here, I'll just pull us up further and then I'll get in. All right. Are you ready? All right, just give me a second. I got us. All right. the middle. Ah, there's rocks. Let me get out and pull. I'll get out and pull. Huh? Sure. Oh, I'm stuck or hooked on my paddle. Okay.
All right, there's a big rock there. Okay, can you reach that one? Can you reach the rock? I'm just gonna pull us all the way up. You can just take the rocks. I'm gonna get up up here. You can get in right there. Oh, it got deep here. Why don't you go ahead and get in first? I'll come up to the next rock. It'll be easier. Actually, this one. That one's got a big rock to hit. All right. Yep. And we're off. All right, we're good up in the middle right now. That's a log. Left. Straight up. And we're free. And that's Horse Lake. Finally a loon. And there it goes. All right, made it to our camp on Horse Lake. Wonderful sight. Right on a point, a beautiful sand put in for the canoe. No rocks to deal with. It's a gorgeous point out here. I'm going to get some water. I am extremely thirsty. I tend not to carry lots of water with me when I have a lot of portages one right after the other. And we did and had a line a few um, rapids well swifts not rapids uh, mostly because they were just too shallow to get the canoe through but man look at this lake So we decided to actually pack up and head out. There's a storm coming. We're only two hours away from our car. Still one in the afternoon. And so decided to just go ahead and pack up everything and get out of here dry. It's been a good trip. And we still got some, some more paddling and portages to do, so. 
Um, I don't feel bad about it. We had a good trip and the only thing we were doing here tonight was just staying the night and getting up five in the morning and packing out. So I feel good about that. All right, shoving off. And give it a push. Bye bye. So on the 160 portage from Tin Can Lake into Mudro. It's half mile, but it's uh it's not that tough Whoa, as I bang a tree. <laughs> it's okay, it didn't come off. Didn't see that one. Anywho, we're getting there. 160 rod, half mile, boat over. I have to go back for my packs. This is Sand Pit Lake. Right over there is our next portage up over that hill. That one's 80 rods. <sighs> I really enjoyed this trip. I have to watch when I'm walking about the gaps. But. Oh, what an amazing trip. Fishing was great. Weather was the weather. I mean, it was really hot. A lot hotter than it was supposed to be. Um, just a week ago, they were predicting the lows in the 30s and the highs in the 50s. It ended up being the lows in the 50s and the highs in the 80s. So, um, and uh, that prompted the sand flies to come out early so we ended up having a lot of bugs but yeah it's all part of it still an amazing trip I'm gonna miss just being out in all this Hey, Mr. Turtle. Yeah, talking to you. Yeah, just watch me by. That's a painted turtle. So, out of Mudro, onto this little river that flows between it and I think Pickett Lake. And I am going to have to watch for some rocks on this. Yep. Uh, yeah, I see lots of uh, painted rocks. It's looking pretty good up to that little narrow spot there. The rock on the right, right here. Rock on the right here too. Oh, there is just no avoiding those. I guess if we went there. Huh? Yeah. <clears throat> I saw that one, but I didn't see this one. Alright. We're going to snake this way. Alright. 
that. Another little narrow up here. Another turtle. Hey, Mr. Turtle. I don't remember that. <laughs> it was about five in the morning when we came through here last. All right. Um, Kind of this way. Yep, straight through. Ugh. A lot of rocks in here. Uh, aluminum either. <laughs> Alright, it's widening out. Yeah, I think it just kind of snakes through the grasslands and the mud from here. Rock on the right. There. Going from paddling to pulling. There, it's deeper over here. Deeper on the left, real shallow on the right. A little sandy in here. that way I think. Which way do we go? Let's go this way. I see that one ending right there. We chose the right one. That one just went into like a little swamp. Yep. Um, there's one right here. And there's one right here. Now we're just uh, one right after the other. Okay, here's the put in, I think. All right. Here on Mudro Portage. Very muddy. <laughs> kind of having to pick our way through a bog here. But sorry about that. It's very short. And this is the end of our wonderful trip up to Crooked Lake in the Boundary Waters, in northern Minnesota. I'd like to give a shout out to my aunt and uncle's business um they helped us out with the permit and stuff 
Uh, they're called Canoe Country Outfitters. If you're ever in Ely, Minnesota looking to do a trip, definitely check them out. Family owned and operated since 1946. We've only three generations of families that's passed through so far. But they're one of the originals and they'll treat you right and they're very good people. Anyway, this concludes our trip. Everybody, have a grateful day.